Hello, everyone. You're watching the Outlet Podcast solely and wholly segment. And I'm your electrician, Gazy. And it's a pleasure to be doing this third episode of the vlogcast. Uh, you guys, you can catch me on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio when it comes to my podcast and my podcast uh content when it comes to my spark plugs my acoustic sessions because i do play guitar you guys i'm not the best singer but i'm not gonna let that stop me just just singing songs that i really like to uh really like to sing and if you like to if you love acoustic stuff you uh go get a give it a listen over on itunes soundcloud and stitcher radio and even google uh right now uh this in my vlogcast, I like to talk about things that are very important to me that uh, apart from my outlet podcast for, uh, where I do inspirational entertainment, I talk about comic books, news, all the sorts of stuff. If you can see over my uh, shoulder right here, let's see if I can count them off for you. I got Mira, Aquaman, uh, Harley Quinn, Go uh, here, Goku somewhere. Goku is somewhere back there, you guys. And then I got uh, this girl from uh, Gungrave uh, or Gungale over in Sword Art Online. I to I'm totally messing up her name. Uh, dang, I'm totally messing her name right now. But if you know her name, she's the one with the gun. And then Tiny Deadpool right here. And then I got my posters right in the back over her shoulder. So that's the stuff I normally talk about in my podcast. Um, on this side, I actually like to share things that uh, are very important to me uh, in regards to how it is I how it is my belief system came out came about to be and how i know that my belief system is true and i just want to share that uh that i'm learning about my faith i'm 29 years old but i'm always learning about what jesus christ has done for me and what his uh sacrifice uh, on the cross of calvary has done for me if this doesn't let you know what i believe well i'm a christian i'm a born again christian and I want to share with you all the topic of today's vlog, which is salvation. Now it's gonna be, now this is, oh my gosh, don't I'm not gonna go crazy theologian. I'm not I don't like to be that kind of person. Uh, we have practical questions and there are practical answers. Now you can dig and dig and find a lot of truth and you can go through the through the the, the, the you can go through the conduit when it comes to salvation you, or go down the gauntlet and see all these different facets. Uh, when you talk about salvation, you talk about predestination, you talk about uh, redemption, and uh, all these, all these things. But if you don't know what salvation is, then how can you share it? Your faith. I believe in sharing my faith. I am a born again Christian. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of my sins, and that uh, that every time I go and ask Him for forgiveness, He'll forgive me of my sins and he'll help me live a lifestyle that pleases god and that eschews sin that i that i don't that i'm not bound to my sinful behaviors anymore so that's what the topic today is about salvation number one what is it uh what is it salvation is it's god's way of forgiving your sins so you can live a holy life for him and attain eternal life you see that i used Two, there's two ways you you're going to live you're going to live here on this earth and you're going to live either in eternal eternal glory uh, eternal peace and joy or eternal brimstone and fire and condemnation now i'm not talking about being a good person here like you can be a good person i went to a i had a recent experience where i was at a coffee shop and i don't uh I don't want to share which one, but I was at a, uh, um, an indie coffee shop and the guy was unbelievably sweet, caring, uh, sociable, understanding. And I was just talking to him about some of the books uh, that I was reading while I was in his uh, coffee shop. And I left the shop very happy and content. However, um, the Holy Spirit talked to me. The Holy Spirit said, uh, Gazy, it doesn't matter if you're a good person. Salvation is a part is different from being a good person. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, what are you talking about, Holy Spirit? And the Spirit of God was was telling me, there are people who are good, who do good things. And that's great. Do good. Do good while you still can. However, 
you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to recognize that you, you, that you are a sinner and that you need to be saved. In Romans, 6, 20, Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, for the wages of sin is death. Like, you can be a great person, but the consequences of your sinful acts, which is rebellion against God, that merits eternal condemnation. Then, well, and you can say, well, well, Gazy, is your is the God you serve so loving? Well, yeah, He loves you, and He's using this moment right now, and moments prior, possibly in your past, and maybe there will be moments in the future to let you know that Jesus is alive, and you can hope in Him. That He who was resurrected from the dead died for your sins. All of your, all the consequences of your actions, all of the rebellions, all the things that you do that you know are wrong, maybe even these bad habits that you have, you can be freed from them. You see, God needs to forgive your sins, and He won't just do it out by Himself. There had to be a sacrifice. So let me go on to number two. Why do you need it? Why do you need salvation? Well, you need salvation three, uh, four reasons. I put down four reasons you to have a relationship with God. Now you can, uh, you can say Gazy. Well, uh, I love God. I believe in a higher power. And well, you know, the Bible even says that the devil believes and shudders. So what's the difference of just believing and acknowledging and recognizing that there's a higher power and not going further. You cannot go forward because their sin divides. See, if you believe there's God, then you also should believe that he's holy. And if he is holy, he cannot mix with what is not holy because that's contrary to himself. Now, he doesn't want you to be contrary to him, but your actions have separated you from him. And he's tried to reach out to you. And the biggest expression, the biggest hand outside to try to grab you and pull you in is Jesus Christ. Check it out. In Romans chapter 5, 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you believe that Jesus Christ came and was born in the immaculate way through the Virgin Mary, that he was born, that he lived his entire life, 30 years he started his ministry, and 33 years, that's when he was crucified Three days later, he was resurrected for our joy and for my hope. If you believe that his sacrifice was to forgive all of your sins, you are justified because of what you believe. Your sins are forgiven if you, if you make that expression. If you believe, then you will be saved. And because you believe, you have peace with God through Jesus Christ. You need Jesus to be to have a relationship with God. Without God, you cannot. You God will love you, of course. God loves everybody. God blesses people. Even if you, if God knows, there are there are people in this world who will never serve Him, but that won't stop Him from blessing, from showing love. When obviously the the Bible says that the God causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust, which means that. He, he looks at the acts of everybody that's in the world. If you're doing good, God will bless you. But this isn't about doing good, you guys. This is about eternal life. This is about acknowledging your ways that are different from God's ways and getting on his level, on his frequency. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. It says, For if, we, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his son, so much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You see, you guys, you can be saved by the de because Jesus died for your sins as a pure sacrifice. No, Jesus wasn't married. No, Jesus didn't commit fornication. No, Jesus didn't have kids. If you want to get into that, uh, the point is, is that there were people who wrote something called the Gnostic Gospels, which were years and years after the actual Gospels were written. 
So they have no credibility whatsoever. The Gospel of Judas, it does not have any credibility because it was written further, further away. And it was also in an area where the Gospel wasn't purely written. When Paul wrote to the Philippians, when, he, when Paul wrote to, to the Ephesians, when he wrote to the Corinthians, when he wrote to the Romans, we know where he was, you guys. You cannot believe things that are outdated such as the Gnostic Gospels. <sighs> and you can be saved, you guys. You can attain eternal life in heaven. That's why you need salvation, to attain eternal life in heaven. John 3.16, not Austin 3.16, you guys. I love wrestling. I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love wrestling, but you guys, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son and his son came into this world to die for your sins, all your rebellions. Uh, you might notice that you, are do, you might do things that are wrong and you feel guilty. Why do you feel guilty? Why would you feel guilty if there's no consequence for your actions? Well, you feel guilty because it's wrong. It's sin. But Jesus can help you. Jesus can save you. He can rescue you from living a life uh, tied by the burdens of your sinful actions. And that's my third point. You can be free from all of these habits. These, the, the, the Apostle Paul, he said, I do not, the things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, those I do. Therefore, it is not me who, who does it, but the sinful nature within me. You guys... Have you ever noticed that sometimes you just do bad things and it's like, why did I even do that? Why did I curse at my parents? Why did I steal? Why did I say that racial slur? Why did I, why did I hate on this person? Why did I curse at this guy? Why did I steal and et cetera, et cetera? Well, you have a sinful nature within you and it's poison and it drags you down. Oh my gosh, the sinful nature is unbelievably horrible. It's toxic. It ruins. It makes you so that you become addicted. People become addicted to drinking, addicted to drugs, addicted to pornography because they're looking more, more, more. They're constantly searching and they will never be satiated. You, you never will be. You can be freed from that lifestyle. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, he tells you, and he, like he told me, come to me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in here, and ye shall find rest unto yourselves and to your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, uh, verses 28 through 30. Jesus is saying there, you guys, Follow me. Live life the way I lived it. Take my example. Do this. Jesus wants you, because it's so easier. When I, when, I, when I started to think back, you know, I was realizing, well, why do, I, why do I have to buy Christmas presents? Why do I feel so inclined to do these things? Why, and that has nothing to do with celebrating Christmas. Celebrating Christmas is me thanking God that he sent someone, he sent my Savior to rescue me from my lifestyle, my sinful lifestyle, which, will, which separates me from God and then drags me to hell, ultimately. Jesus saved me from all those things. So that's why I looked at, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a good um, example, like I'm looking at my life and I'm realizing that there are some things that matter and some things that don't. Jesus says, why are you going to worry? Why are you going to worry what you wear? Why are you worry? You know, can you add one hair on your head? Look at the birds. They don't, they don't worry about what they're going to eat, but God provides for them. Look at the flowers, how beautiful they are, how beautifully adorned they are. They don't worry about what they're going to wear. Jesus said this. So why do I have to worry about having to live up a fashion? To make someone happy, like to, to, to please someone else apart from, you know, apart from my wife. I, I, there's, no, there's no purpose. So Jesus tells me, live like I live. Follow after me. Live by my example. Use my words. And 
I always use this last one because many people try to scare those who are lost. If you, Many Christians try to scare. I've had some adults, maybe back in the, the, their times, it, you know, they, they used it. But now, I don't want to scare you into... I don't want to drag you into heaven by scaring you about hell. Hell is a real place. We will all have to give an account for the things that we have done. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life because your sins are forgiven, then you will end up in a place of eternal condemnation. And you might ask yourself, well, why, if a God is so good, why will he do that? Why will he have me suffer for eternity? Well, he's so good, he's trying to, get, he's trying to rescue you right now. He wants you to recognize that, that you're very important. Like, I, I don't know how you're living your life, but you are loved. There are people who need you. So Romans 10, 13, for, so, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call on Jesus, you will be saved. He will save you. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but I'm saying he's going to save you. And with him by your side, with God's word with you, instructing you, with the Holy Spirit helping you as a more than a conscious, like we have a conscious, right? The Holy Spirit is more than just the conscious. It's the presence of the living God. The Holy Spirit helps me in my day-to-day -day life. Gazy, don't look at that. Gazy, read the Bible. Why? Read. I want you to read. And there's always a reason. There's always a reason why. So, it's the Holy Spirit who, and the, it's the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, God's holy word, the Bible, and Jesus, just as Jesus as my arrowhead, as my guide, taking me and purifying me and sanctifying me day in and day out. Do I mess up? Yo, you guys, I mess up. I'm not perfect. Let me, let me check my power level real quick. Hold on. Let me see where, where it's at. Let me check my, here we go. Okay, so my power level says uh, I'm under 9,000. I'm not that perfect. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not. But he loves me, and he wants to help me. It's not about being perfect. It's about being holy and being, uh, it, well, it's about being holy and doing righteousness, practicing righteousness. Uh, God will perfect me, but until he truly perfects me, I am going through a process of sanctification and of consecration and practicing righteousness. So that's why you need it. You need to, you need to have salvation for a relationship with God, to attain eternal life in heaven, to be freed from the burdens of your sinful actions, and you, to be saved from, eternal, from eternity in hell. So I'm just going to, I want to go a little bit faster because this vlog is actually going, um, it's actually taken a lot. So uh, my third and fourth point, uh, uh, salvation establishes the foundation for a prosperous life. You know, when you have Jesus by your side, you, you begin to realize and weed out things that you need and things that you don't need. Point four, what doesn't it do? Well, salvation, it doesn't give you a pass to sin. Many people are like, oh, I'm saved. I don't got to do anything. Yo, yeah, what? No. How dare you? <laughs> it doesn't give you a pass to sin. Romans 6, uh, I believe it's 6.1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live, uh, live any longer therein? Once you're, you cannot practice sin or sinful lifestyles once you've been saved. That's why I don't agree, and it's wrong for people to say that they they live a, that they are Christian homosexuals. There's no such thing, you guys. You can uh, tell yourself that till you're blue in the face, but you're living a hypocritical lifestyle. Uh, the, the, the same Bible that you might uh, read to make yourself feel better, yeah, the same Bible that you make yourself feel better, it also condemns you. And it also shows you the error of your ways. That's what God's word does. It shows you that you're wrong and that he's right and that he wants to help you. So you can do things that are righteous. That's what the Bible is. That's why a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people are uncomfortable with the Bible because it's truth and no one likes to hear it. Jesus, there are people living in the time of Jesus that didn't like to hear it. There, 
Jesus would call out the religious, uh, the, the religious Jews at the time, and he would say, "You guys love to be you love you guys love to be so hardcore in the law, but you're forgetting about the more important things about love, mercy." You're forgetting these things. I like you're doing all these. You're doing all these things. You're paying your tithes and you're doing all these things. All right, but you're forgetting about what's like what's important: having love and showing mercy. They both ought to be done, but one not ought to be done more than the other. They there's needs to be a balance, you guys. So, uh, Philippians two twelve. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have obeyed. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, salvation doesn't give you a pass to sin. You need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Paul was writing to the Philippian people at the time, the church in Philippi, and he was telling them, hey, you guys, I'm not with you. I can't be there with you. You need to search for God on your own. I mean, there was a church but between the times where you don't go and you fellowship with your brothers, it's just you. And that's what and that's how we're going to conclude. It's just you. I'm talking, but uh, right. I'm talking to you. But right now, it's like you can cut off this video and it's just you. And these words are just going to be with you. Do you want to be saved? Do you recognize that you're. There are things in your life that are out of whack, that are, are, that are, man, that drive you crazy. Well, let me tell you, Jesus lived on this earth. He knows what you're going through. All right. He might not know, he might not know what it is to commit sin, but he knows what it is to carry it because he carried your sins, all of them, all of the things that you've done, the things that you have are have done are doing now and will do he carried them all everything and he died for them and on the third day he was resurrected just as the prophecies said he was resurrected and right now he's alive he was alive when he resurrected and then 30 days later he went up to heaven and right now he intercedes not mary not mary mary doesn't have any power Jesus has the power. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is with me, and he can be with you. If you recognize the things that I've acknowledged, you know, do you recognize that you're a sinner? Is there something you want to do about it? Let me help you. It's as simple as saying a small it's as simple as saying a prayer. And follow me in a prayer. Uh, Jesus, I recognize that I'm not perfect. I recognize that I'm a sinner. I recognize that my life is out of my control. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that your blood it paid the price for everything that I've done. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Write my name in the, in the Lamb's book of life so that I might have eternal life. And fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I might be guided by the presence of God so that I can please my Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Help me practice holiness. Help me practice what is true. You are true. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer, you're saved, yo. And that's my phone. <laughs> you're saved. Now, all you got to do, I just want to tell you, congratulations, from, because now you're going to be my brother or my sister in Christ. I'm going to keep on doing these vlogs. They might not be this long, but I'm going to keep doing these vlogs. Let me know if you've uh, confess if you made that uh, if you made that prayer. Hit me up on Facebook.com backslash outlet podcast. Let me know there. You know, uh, like and subscribe here to the YouTube, and I'm just gonna continue doing uh, uh, solely and holy vlogcasts uh, so that you might be edified. You know, 
And that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, stay tuned. My next episode, I'm going to be un unboxing, unopening or something. My comic books. The, they're they're poly bagged Harley's little black book. I'm gonna be opening these. There's I only bought three, so I'm gonna be opening these things up, and I'm pretty excited. Hopefully, I got some cool variants. You guys, God bless you guys. Jesus loves you. Much love. Connect and recharge, you guys. <laughs>